we adore you, King of Kings, we adore you. We adore you. Maker of heaven and earth, we adore you. We adore you. Yes, we adore you. We adore you. We praise you, Jesus. Sadaka. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Well, we're in Takati, we're born away. 
of everything God how great is that love God we are forever grateful Jesus because of who you are in our lives we exalt you and we love you and we praise your name Jesus because there is no one like you God it's so amazing grace God that we can stand here God because you first loved us oh God and take away all the chains oh God we praise your name Jesus we love you and we praise you Jesus Thank you, Jesus. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. 
And I'm very grateful to God for yet another opportunity where we come to spend time in prayer before our Father who has loved us with an everlasting love through His Son, Jesus Christ. And it's only in Him that our prayers are not only heard, but are made acceptable before God. Thus, the Bible says, even in relation to all God's promises, that Jesus is the yes. When we look at 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 20, and I'm reading from the Good News Translation, the Bible says, For it is He who is the yes to all God's promises. This is why through Jesus Christ our amen is said to the glory of God. And from that scripture, it is to such a father that we today come humbly before him to offer our prayers and our cries to him. Remember, brethren, when we come before God, we are not trying to change his mind on some issue, but it's for us to come and submit into his will for us, even in relations to the youths of this nation, where our focus is going to be in this week's uh, today, to, to today as we pray. So I'll just love to open with a word of prayer, even as we continue. Father, we want to bless you, and we want to honor you. Just to know that, Lord, you have loved us with an everlasting love. And that's the confidence, Lord, that we can come before you at any season of our lives. Where we are hurt, Lord, we can come to you. Where we are happy, Lord, we can come to you. Where we are disappointed, Lord, we can come to you. And yet we'll find audience with you. So we want to bless you. And even for this evening as we pray, we know that, Lord, you not only hear our prayers, but you are also going to answer in accordance to your will. So we thank you even as we surrender our youths uh, this evening. Father, we pray that may your spirit hover around every young people in this, uh, in, in this city and in this country so that, Lord, your purposes may prevail even in this time. We thank you and we bless you. We pray that may you bless our time even as we pray that your name will be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. Now, being youthful is a gift from God because youth is the strength and posterity of any society. And even when we look through the, the Bible or the history, even just 
normal, what we can call secular history, we can actually learn that youths have been very, uh, they have been very key. Like, for example, we have people like Alexander the Great, somebody who conquered the whole world at the age of 20. In the Bible, we have Daniel, the prophet, who served under four kings, and he served most of the kings in, in his early years as a youth. And we also have our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He saved the world in the definition of a, of a youth. Jesus fits in. So Jesus saved the world even as the youth. And also in matters of war, when you look at the World War I and the World War II, was fought behind a background of youthful soldiers with minimum age, for example, in America, it was 18 years old. But we have it in records that the youngest soldier in America was 12 years old in World War II. And a Serbian was seven years old when he was enrolled as a soldier uh, during the Second World War. So we have seen, even from our own history, that being youthful shows us one thing, that when youths are given proper direction and purpose, they can be able to achieve and conquer everything that God intended them to achieve. And that's why today we want to spend time and call unto God concerning, concerning our youth. And my prayer is that we, especially as a generation that is now showing, and the, the, some of the young people are coming soon, we are indebted to them to give them purpose and direction. Because whatever the youth pursue most of the times is what their predecessors were pursuing or shown importance of the same. For God's purpose for this society is... When you read Psalms chapter 145 and verse 3 and 4, we find it, it talks to us about God's heart concerning a society. The Bible says, Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised and His greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall commend your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. So we can see there that the Bible says, Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. And his greatness is unsearchable. But even in that greatness, God says, One generation shall commend your works to another. So it is in the purpose of God for his purposes and his will to be passed on from generation to generation. And that is what is going to make the basis of our prayer today. That the, the, the generation of the young people that is with us will be the heralds of the mighty works of God to the next generation. And just to start our prayers, I want us to go before God and we are going to pray for three things. One, we are going to bring repentance on behalf of our youths. When you look keenly at the human nature, you'll realize we cannot repent enough. There is no time in history where any person can claim that I've repented enough. We can see, even in America today, with the movement Black Lives Matter, people want people to repent about things that were done many years ago. So even in our own fallen nature, we realize that we cannot repent enough. And if it were not for Jesus to input his righteousness on us, even if we spent the whole day, the whole year on earth repenting, none of those prayers could be enough. 
So today we stand in the account that Jesus has made us righteous and that's why our repentance is acceptable. So let me ask you, today when you hear the word youth is mentioned, what comes into your mind? To some, when the word youth is mentioned, what comes into your mind to some is inexperienced. And it's true. Many young people are inexperienced in so many things. To some of you, when you hear the word youth, drug addiction comes into your mind because that's true. Many of our young people are drug addicts. To some of you, when you hear the word youth, murderers, and murderers are, takes many forms. For the girls, it's abortion. For the many young men, it's robberies. To some, when you hear the word youth, you see thieves, and it's true. Many of the gangs are led by youths. Some of you, when you hear the word youth, oh, what comes into your mind is sexual immorality, and it's true. The propagators of homosexuality, illicit sex, sex before marriage, it's youths. So that's true. And some of you, when you hear the word youth, what comes into your mind is disobedience, especially to parents and to authorities. And it's true. When you look at uh, the rate of disobedience in our country and even in the world towards parents and towards authority, many of it is done by the youths. And this is true. When you read the Bible, especially Isaiah 59 verse 1 to 7, the Bible says this, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, or his ear dull that it cannot hear, but your iniquities have made a separation between you and your God. And your sins have hidden his face from you so that he does not hear. For your hands are defiled with blood and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue matters wickedness. No one enters sweet justly. No one goes to law honestly. They rely on empty pleas. They speak lies. They conceive mischief and give birth to iniquity. They hatch others' eggs. They weave the spider's web. He who eats their egg dies, and from one that is crushed, a viper is hatched. Their, web, their webs will not serve as clothing. Men will, not men will not cover themselves with what they make. Their works are works of iniquity, and deeds of violence are in their hands. Their feet run to evil, and they are swift to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity. And that is very true. So we see God is telling us that his hands is not too short that he cannot save. Neither is ears too dull that they cannot hear. Because we have testimonies from scriptures that God is able to save. We can read in Exodus when God rescued the Israelites from the Egyptians and so many other testimonies in scripture where God rescued people. We also have testimony that God's ears are not dull to hear because we have seen how he had Hannah's prayer for a child. But the Bible says it's our sin that stand in between us and God. And especially in this season of Corona, it has been a season of unveiling what we are when the church environment is taken away from us. And I can tell you as a matter of fact, many of our youths, even the ones in church, we are not doing very well. Some have been dealt themselves in drugs, 
some have indulged themselves in illegal sexual activities, robberies, and all manner of evil. Maybe, just maybe, one of our very own, one of our very works for this generation is to bring identification defenders on behalf of our youths. That the Lord may spare some for his purpose. We can read in Daniel chapter 9 where Daniel identified with the sins of his people. And I believe we ought to do the same for our young people. And that is the first thing that we will bring before God. Identification repentance on behalf of our young people. Because it is our young people who have raised their hands to shed innocent blood. It is our young people who have robbed people. It is our young people who uh, uh, have committed abortions. And that is the first thing that we are going to pray. The second thing that we are going to pray concerning our young people is the issue of idolatry. That we are going to pray against idolatry. Idolatry is the extreme admiration or love of something or someone, according to dictionary.com. In our culture today, through the influence of ungodly music and movies, it has led this culture to have three key idols in our days. That is sex, which I'll explain, love of money, and love of power. Sex. Have you realized, for those who are movie lovers, like I am, have you realized how abnormal sex has been exaggerated to look so romantic? And sex has been made to look so cool, especially outside marriage. Have you realized how in our latest movies, homosexuality is celebrated like an achievement? And any disagreement with them, you are called a bigot or a religious fanatic. That's idolatry. We have elevated sex as an idol. Another idolatry that we are going to pray concern is the love of money. And that is greed. When you look at our young people today, they believe in the ideology uh, I, I think it's, it's 50 cents who came with it. Uh, you, you, die, it's, you get rich or you die trying. And that's why many of our young people are dying by the bullet. Because the only way that somebody can become a millionaire overnight is when they are armed robbers. Nothing more. Or oh, they sell drugs. They can be millionaires overnight. The things people do for money. The people, sometimes, even the, the, the people who are celebrated in the things that uh, they are doing. For example, uh, and I'm not judging, people celebrate Vera Siddika. And even the type of lifestyle she lives. That's the love of money. That's an idolatry. And the third thing that is an idol in our days is the love of power to control. That you'll find women use their bodies to have control. Nowadays you find many young people, especially girls and even young men, they are employed not because of what is in their certificate, but what they can do in bed. Employment through sex. And people are using that 
so that they may have power to control either the outcome or the things that they need. Men, on the other hand, in their desire to, to use power to control, they use their strength because biologically, majority of men, at least when I was growing up, but nowadays it has changed because you realize even a young man, if you ask them uh, what, the, what the kind of girl they want to marry, you'll find a young man say, I want a girl who can protect me. So which, which <laughs> to, to me, growing up, if my father was alive, I think that he will take a lot of issues with that because we were taught you, you should be able to protect women. But today we have, so there are still men who are very, they have strength. And they use that strength so that they can have control over people. And that's why nowadays we have experienced young men killing girls because they believe in this philosophy. If I can't have you, then no one else will. So they kill you. So we are going to pray against that in relation to our young people. And the last thing that we are going to pray about is we are going to pray for youthful believers. Because many times we spend time praying for uh, people who sometimes even outrightly they say they don't want the Lord. And uh, we should pray for them. But we forget that there are young people who love the Lord and they live for the Lord. And for them, we want to pray for them that they will be strong that they will do exploit for the glory of God. So we'll pray for youth, youthful believers. And the Bible says in Daniel chapter 11 verse 32, he shall seduce with flattery those who violate the covenant. But the people who, near, who know their God shall stand firm and take action. The truth of the matter is this. God desire none to perish but many will still perish because they have refused the one who is the giver of life, our Lord Jesus Christ. And even as Daniel was talking about the last days, he says those who violate the covenant will be seduced by flattery. It happened to some Jews and it will happen even in our days. But there is a group, and that is the group I want us to focus on, who know their God. The Bible says they will stand firm and take action. Standing firm isn't by our own strength. Because Jesus told Peter that the devil has been given permission to sift you as a, as a farmer sifts wheat. But Jesus had prayed for him that when Peter comes back, he should strengthen his brethren. And we saw that Jesus was actually denied by Peter because standing for Jesus is not automatic. And that's why we are going to pray in relation to that. And we are going to pray in relation to Ephesians also 6.10 concerning our youthful believers. That they will be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. That's our prayer. That they will prevail in this culture that is anti-God in all its fiber. Because this culture is telling us to start families between man and man. So we are becoming more ungodly. We are a culture that even government doesn't care about its own citizens. So we, standing strong is something that we need for our youthful believers. Because there are so many voices that are calling out for them to act contrary. And lastly, we are going to pray for the needs of the youth. Because the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 3, for though we walk in the flesh, we are not waging war according to the, to the flesh. This means that even us as believers, we live in a real world. We live in a world where food is bought by money. 
Even believers buy food. And we want to pray for the needs because it's not a surprise to God that you are in this situation at this time. And many believers are facing some hardships. Some are struggling with their rent. Some are struggling with their food. Some are struggling with their transport. Many have had to survive with a single meal in a day. Many have had questions that they have no answers. And all these things are very real. And some are painful. But even when we come to pray concerning that, we must know a few things as believers. That number one, God wasn't caught by surprise about this situation. And this situation is not out of his control. Number two, the steps of a righteous person are ordered of the Lord. He knows where you are and how you are feeling. And that's why we are going to pray for the needs. And the third thing is God in his time, he will work things out in accordance to his purpose. And also when we, when we read Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6, the Bible commands us not to be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication to let all our requests be made known to God. And the Bible says in verse 7, and the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding will be upon us in Christ Jesus. And that's why we are going to put all our needs before our loving Father because he cares for us. So let us start with praying for repentance because as me and you agree, that there are a lot that has, gone, has been going on. And this repentance is not that the youths are doing. We are part of it. Just as Daniel prayed in Daniel chapter 9, we are part of it. So I want, wherever you are, just join me in bringing a sacrifice of repentance before the Lord on behalf of our youths and even of our very self. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, Lord, because you have told us in your word in Psalms 50 and verse 15 that we call unto you in times of trouble, you will deliver us and will glorify you. Father, in our nation today and in our life, we realize that we are troubled in every side. And Lord, when we look at scriptures, as you have spoken through your prophet Isaiah, in Isaiah 59, the Lord, your hand is not too short that you cannot save. And indeed, Lord, when we look at the way you dealt with the children of Israel, how you saved them from oppression from Egypt, how you parted the Red Sea so that they may be able to pass and save them from the wrath of the Egyptians' army. We realize that indeed, Lord, your hand is not too short that you cannot save. But your word tells us that it is our sins that have stand between us and you. Your word also tells us, Lord, that your ears are not too dull so that you may not hear. And Lord, indeed, when we look at scriptures, we realize that, Lord, indeed, you are a God who hears prayers. We have seen, Lord, how Hannah cried to you concerning her desire to have a son. And Lord, you answered the prayer when you gave Hannah someone. So, Lord, it's a testimony, even against us, that you are a God who hears prayers. But, Lord, our sins are standing before, before you. And that's why this evening, Lord, we are coming to you. We humble ourselves before you. 
and asking for your mercy. As the young people of this nation, we have given ourselves into drug addiction. And even we have come to the extent of committing robberies and some we have committed murder so that we can have money to feed our addiction. As young people, Lord, we have indulged ourselves in sexual immorality and we have called it love and romance. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us, Father. Where, Lord, we have laid in wait and shed innocent blood, forgive us. For young men who have made girls pregnant and instead of taking responsibility, Father, we have funded for their abortion, forgive us, Lord. For every disobedience of our authority and especially the authority that you have given us through our parents, where we have disregarded the things which they spoke to us and they were right, Lord, we pray that may you forgive us and remember mercy. Even in moments, Lord, where we have disregarded the authority that you have given us through government, forgive us, Lord. Because all these things, they are standing against us and they are making that your face is not directed to, uh, towards us. And Lord, we are asking that may you remember mercy. May you remember mercy for the idolatry that we have taken, for the love of money that we have, we, we, we have, we have committed things that people can pose naked even on the internet for the, for, for the things to be shown around the world just for the love of money. Forgive us, Lord. Where we have exalted sex and we have celebrated homosexuality and celebrate it as if it's an achievement, forgive us. Where we have called evil good and good evil, forgive us, Lord. Forgive us. And may you remember mercy. We thank you, Lord, because we know that you have heard our prayer. In Jesus' name, thank you. Amen. The second thing, as I said earlier, we are going to pray. We are going to pray that God may guard this generation over the three idolatries that we have talked about, over the three idols that we have talked about. And that is sex, love of money, and love of power to control. Sex has become an idol in our day. Look at the advertisements. Look at the movies. Look even at even some of the media personality dress when they come on screen. They are screaming sensuality. And we need to pray. And the direction that we need to pray is that God may give a spirit of discernment over our young people. That we may be able to discern the trends and flee. Because evil, evil does not come at once. Homosexuality today in our nation is nothing shocking. Because it was brought to us bit by bit. Today is acceptable. It's acceptable. We celebrate it. It's acceptable. So we, we want to pray. As the Bible says, we are normally not ignorant of the schemes of the enemy. But sometimes many of us are ignorant. And that's why we want to pray for spirit of discernment. And also we want to pray that the Holy Spirit may touch those young people who have ascribed to these three idols that they will repent and come back to the Lord. Those are the two things we want to pray. And let us pray. Father, we want to bless you. Lord, your word commands us that we shall not have any other God before you. And Lord, in our generation, we have seen, especially these three idols, competing with, your love, with the love for you. Sex, 
love of money, and love of power. Father, we want to pray for our young people. The Lord, may you cover us with a spirit of discernment. The Lord, the young people, we seek wisdom through reading and studying your word that we may grow a heart of discernment so that we may be able to see the prevailing trends that are anti-God so that we may be able to flee idolatry. Lord, we also want to pray that those young people who have ascribed to these idols, that they may realize that they are wrong and they may repent of their sins and come back to you. We thank you, Lord, because you have told us in your word, if we pray anything in accordance to your will, that one you are going to do. And Lord, we know, as you have commanded us to flee idolatry, we know that you are going to do it unto us. In Jesus' name, we pray and believe. Thirdly, we are going to pray uh, for the youth believers <clears throat> that they are going to be strong, especially in these times. The Bible in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10, the Bible says, finally be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. <clears throat> As I said earlier, this culture we can no longer say that Kenya is a Christian nation. That one is not true. Kenya is not a Christian nation. In fact, we are more a polytheist than a monotheist nation. And if you want me to prove it to you, look at our national day of prayer. How many gods do we ascribe to? That is your answer. So we are not a Christian nation. And let us not lie to the young generation that we are a Christian nation. We are not. We may have Christian names, but we are not a Christian nation. And that's why we want to pray that in this prevailing culture in our nation that is anti-God, from government to education, that the people who know their God, they are going to stand against the current prevailing culture, that they are going to be strong. That though they live in this world, they will know that they don't wage war in accordance to the weapons that are fleshly. So we want to pray that God may give strength to the believers. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, it is you, Lord, who can sustain a fish in a salty water and the fish comes out not salty and yet all its life it has lived in a salty water. And Lord, we believe that even in a society that is totally given out to propagate things that are not in line with your word, you can sustain people who are called by your name. And that's why, Lord, we are calling out that the young people, the youths of this country who are called by your name, the Lord in your power, may you preserve them. Preserve them, Lord. Let them stand. Let them say no boldly. Let them say no boldly to ungodliness. Let them say no, uh, no to every form of ungodliness, corruption, sex before marriage. Come with tail. Give them the strength, Lord, to stand firm in the strength of your might. Give them the strength, Lord, to be able to live for the purpose that you created them for. The Lord, they will make a difference in society, in the community where they live, in this nation, to the glory and honor of your holy name. Protect them, Lord, from the schemes of the enemy that want to seduce them with flattery. In the name of Jesus, give them peace 
where they have questions, Lord, where they are in doubt because may, may, maybe all, the, all, all their peers are saying, are, are saying the wrong things and they feel like they are, they are out of place. Lord, may you affirm them even in their hearts that they are doing the right thing. Give them the strength to stand to the honor and glory of your holy name. We thank you and we bless you because Lord, we know that you in whom we trust, you can be able to do more than what we are asking and even what we can imagine on behalf of our youths to keep them and to preserve them for your glory. In Jesus' name, we pray and believe. Amen. Just as we are about to finish, we want to pray for the needs of the young people. Corona has brought dynamics that many of us have never been here before. And just as many other things, when you have not done something before, you're going to experience some teething problems. So many of us are grappling with issues of life. Many of us in the last few months, you have struggled with needs and wants. Not, not even wants, needs. Your daily food. Things that make you keep on moving. And that's why we want to pray. Because the Bible urges us that we should not be anxious about anything, but through prayer and our supplication to let our request be made known. So we want to make our request be made known. For those who are sick, and maybe you don't have money to go to hospital, let me tell you that we have a healer who is Jesus. For those who maybe you don't have food, we have a God who is Jehovah Jireh, who is our provider. And we want to bring those things into, uh, into prayer. Let's pray. Father, your word tells us that for though we walk in the flesh, we are not waging war according to the flesh. And that is encouraging to us to know that, Lord, you understand that we live in a real world. We live in a real world that sometimes we experience lack. And Lord, we want to cry out to you, especially to the many young people in our society. In this season, Lord, where many things are going on, we have found many young people are struggling and grappling with lack. Some of them, Lord, struggle to just get their daily food. Lord, we want to pray. You who is Jehovah Jireh, may you provide. There are some, Lord, who are sick and they don't know where to turn to. Father, you who is a healer, may you heal them to the glory and honor of your holy name. Lord, there are some who, where they are, they are having questions. They are having questions with no answers. But Father, we want to pray that may you meet that need of desiring answers at the point of their need. Because Lord, we know that you are the answers to all things. Give them the assurance that this thing has not caught you by surprise. Give them the assurance, Lord. Give us the assurance that Lord, that the steps of a righteous man are ordered of you. And that you understand where you are and you are familiar with the feelings that we have even in the midst of all this trouble. Give us the assurance, Lord, that all things are going to work out for good, especially in fulfilling your purpose. Thank you, Lord, that you hear us. Thank you, Lord, that you have given us a promise that in times of trouble, we can run to you, our high priest, who understand, who is familiar with all that we go through. So we thank you and we bless you. For every other need that maybe I've not mentioned, you, Lord, understand. May you meet 
all the young people's needs at the point of their need to the glory and honor of your holy name. I want to conclude by this scripture which I read as I began. Psalms 145 verse 3 and 4. The Bible says, Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. And His greatness is unsearchable. Generations shall commend your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. What we are not going through is not great. It might be big, but it's not great. The only great is the Lord. And He's the one who is greatly to be praised. May we desire, especially those who are who are older than us, may we desire to be people who are going to impart the generation that is going to come so that they may be able to, com to commend the works to another and declare the mighty works of our Lord to the next generation. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord do you good. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. In Jesus' name, may the Lord really bless us all. And may the Lord bless this nation and the young people of this nation to the glory and honor of his name. Amen. Amen.